Hello YouTube friends. I want to talk to you about the video that you're about to see because I actually filmed it last year. I filmed it in August and it was supposed to be a project that was going to be ongoing then, but I got ill. I wonder if you remember. I ended up in hospital, uh, things unraveled a little bit and so the project got shelved and we're going to start again with it now. Now I was dyeing indigo fabric out in the garden to make fabric for a quilt that I made using the courthouse steps block. Here's a picture of it. And um, with the little pops of red that I think make it really work. I made that quilt over on Patreon and it's gone to its new owner now, but I really, really enjoyed making it and dyeing all the fabric for it. At the same time, I had the idea to dye quite a lot more fabric so that I could offer it to you. But as I say, the whole thing unraveled a little bit. And so watch this video, come back at the end of it, and I'll tell you about how I've resurrected that Indigo project. Now, a few years ago, I was looking back in the, on the YouTubes and it was a number of years ago, I dyed some fabric with Indigo, which is a fantastic transformational thing. Um, with uh, dyeing fabrics really interesting, but Indigo dyeing's like, on another level altogether. So it's time to dye some indigo again because I've got a big project that I want to do. Oh, Eileen heartily agrees. I've got two big projects in fact that I want to do uh, and I'll tell you about them and it, both of them involve me doing some more indigo dyeing. I've started already and I've made the dye bath so I'll tell you a bit about that but in fact looking back on that video that I made, oh maybe three years ago now, uh, I explain quite clearly there how I made the indigo dye bath. So I'll link to that at the end of this video so that you can go back and watch that one if you want. There's lots and lots of different ways of folding fabric or manipulating fabric to make it take the dye differently. And this one is wrapped around this tube. This is just a piece of um, plastic plumbing piping that I got from the builder's merchants for very, very cheap and I use it in lots of ways. And I'm going to, ah, the other thing to note about this is before too long, you end up with very, very blue hands. But I've got my gloves, which I'll be wearing when I get properly into the indigo dye bath. So we'll just get this one prepared so that you can see how this one works. And I'm not wrapping it tightly and you'll see why in a minute. And it also doesn't matter, this extends beyond the tube. So I'm just going to... Now I will say straight off that I'm a, even though I've done indigo dyeing before, I'm pretty much a novice at this. So if anybody out there is screaming at the camera and knows more about what they're talking about than I do, then I'll come clean right away and say, um, I'm experimenting. Like I do with most of the things that I enjoy doing, I'm just having a go. I've secured the middle of this with an elastic band and these bits here aren't on the tube at all. So what I'm going to do now, and this is why I uh, wound it on quite loosely. So I'm going to scrunch it onto the tube like this. And when that ends scrunched on, I get another elastic band and just secure that end with an elastic band. It doesn't need to be on for very tightly, just so that it doesn't undo. And then, I'm using the table now, I'm going to scrunch the other end onto the tube. Now you can see if I'd done this too tightly, I wouldn't, you could tell, can't you, that I did it too tightly the first time. <laughs> I learned quickly that I should just do it on quite loosely. Okay, now, Another elastic band just to keep it in place, like that. So that's now scrunched in the opposite direction. So uh, that's going to go in the dye bath now. But I wanted to talk to you now about all the setup that I've got here. It's brilliant having an outside place to do this because it's such a, uh, firstly, a kind of acoustic thing. And secondly, it's really, really messy. So you wouldn't want to do any of this indoors. So. Whenever you're doing anything with dyes, I think I'm probably telling you stuff you already know, have dedicated things. So, you know, your 
stirrers and your teaspoons and so on just use them for dyeing not for anything else all these things will either get used for indigo dyeing again or thrown away so it's not like I'm not going to make chutney in there anytime soon <laughs> now I'll tell you one of the amazing things about indigo shall I this absolutely amazes me indigo works because of oxidization when it hits the air which means that your dye bath should have the air excluded from it as much as possible potent. so i'm going to i'm going to dye this thing that i've just had soaking in water and i'm just draining it now because that's the other thing when you put your pieces of fabric in there you don't really want to introduce too much more water and dilute the dye bath down so I'm actually draining these before I put them in and you also don't want to introduce air. So what I'm going to do then is just quietly, gently take off the lid and then I'm going to introduce this really, really carefully so that I don't introduce any air. Push it underneath the surface like that and then put the lid back on. Now, the problem as well with working with indigo is that I need to be able to set my, cam my phone to time a minute. <laughs> if I'm going to do a test but I'm all covered in gloves so I'm just going to kind of guess a minute but isn't it funny because a minute is much longer than you think it is isn't it I'm going to leave that in there for a little while but the thing about that though is that the newer the dye bath is the more potent it is so we'll be able to take that out quite soon and what I want you to see is how this develops like a Polaroid photo from being green into being blue let's take it out now I'm going to take it out really, really carefully so that I'm not introducing air. I'm going to scoot it up the side like that, take it straight out and give it a, a rinse straight away. Now you can see this beautiful green. And there's, you know, there's a part of me that wishes it would stay that green. Can you see it starting to go blue? As the air reacts with it. But it took a couple of minutes to go from that amazing green to this beautiful blue. Now that's just the little sample piece. We've got all these things then that I've tied up. Let's do this one first because this this one is the one that looks like the sky when you take it out. So I'm going to pop it in. In fact I might pop in these two as well. So these are the little parcels that I made. Very very carefully lower them in so as not to introduce too much air in there and then this one which has come undone a little bit but that's okay it'll still work perfectly I'll put those in there and we're going to guess our minute it doesn't have to be a minute it can be a little longer and then quickly lid back on what would a song be that would take a minute to sing I wonder <laughs> um, we'll have to think of one Anna and I them up the side here. There they are. Don't let the indigo bath drip back into itself. Again, it's all about not introducing too much air into there. I think I've said that once or twice, haven't I? Right, okay. Let's undo one of these then, because these are my favourites. Move you along, put you up here. Oh, lovely.
I just love these ones. Let's see what these are like. So these were the um, the ones that I concertinaed and tied up with a elastic bands. And the elastic bands will give you a bit of a line on there as well. Now these are interesting. Let's watch. So the indigo's on the outside there, but it's not on the inside. So what you get with this one is a really rather cool grid effect. Let's open this one out. And with this one, you could pop it back in the dye bath and get two different kind of levels of blue. Because this one's very white still. Except for the edges where it was hitting the indigo. Just splashed Anna there. And sometimes with the things that I'm making, I actually do need quite a bit of a contrast between very dark blue, pale blue, like these are, well these are going to be just gorgeous. But I do need a contrast, so I need some whites in there as well for what, for what it is we're going to be doing with this fabric. So that one can hang up there for now. And we'll just watch these little lines emerging. And then I'm going to put the next ones in, pipe, put those in now. So the pipe that I did, just push that a little bit more, get it underneath the water, the, the dye. And then of course I can't cover this up because this pipe's too long. So I'll just do my best. <laughs> and that's going to be in there for... Now those ones were in for a minute because this is a new dye bath. I might put those in for a bit less than a minute because that's really dark. So pretty. Now I think we've got two more to go in, that I can see. I might dip some of these a second time. Take this out very carefully straight into the water and then these ones this is the one with the pegs that can go in there and this is the scrumpledy up one that can go in there and just check oh there is one more one more that one looks fun doesn't it oh that one looks like loads of fun so that one I just did a concertina effect. If we open that out, you can see that it's still very white on the inside. I kind of wish it would stay this green, you know. I like it very much. But the blue's cool too. So let's take the elastic bands off this and see what this has done. Look at this one. Ooh. Oh, I like that one.
Now, while that one's in there, why don't we have a look and see what happened to this one? What we might do, we'll stand that there for a sec and let it go a bit um, developed there. This one's beautifully blue now. Oh, we won't forget that's in there. <laughs> Now this was the one where I used an old ceramic tile that I made years ago. So you would think then that with the resist that's going on with this, you would think that there would be a blue, a square of white underneath there. I think there will be. Let's have a look. Exactly. But the edges, oh that's cool isn't it? <laughs> The edges where I put the string, oh, they're lovely. And then the inside is white again. So just the, the string's just apparent on a little bit of it here. And then when we open this out, we get another one of those grids. That's going to be a blue grid. On really white that hasn't had any dye anywhere near it. I quite like that. Let me hang that one up. Ooh, that's cool, isn't it? Let's just put that on there and watch that one. Now what I'll do with all of these, once they've just been on the line for a few minutes and done a bit of dripping, I used to come along with a hose pipe and spray them all with a hose pipe. But what I do with them now is I just put them all into the washing machine on a rinse cycle and that rinses out any excess dye and actually the, there is hardly any by the time it's cured for a while. And then things are about as colour fast as they're going to be. The thing about indigo is, the reason why I'm wearing gloves of course, is that it will stain your hands and when you're working it, when you, if you're stitching it together by hand, you will end up with some of this coming off onto your hands and also, let's say you were to make a cushion out of it and stick it on your beautiful white sofa, that wouldn't be recommended. And when you wash anything you've made with indigo, I'd wash it on its own. Uh, but it isn't... It doesn't run as badly as some things uh, and the other thing about it is it fades beautifully over time. Some people say oh it fades over time that's a shame. I think that's part of its absolute charm. I really love that but I want to have a look at this one now. So let me get just round here Anna, and I'll open this one up. So this is our pipe one and all it's held on with is a few elastic bands. So let me take this off very slowly. And the outside of it's oxidised, but the inside of it's still green. And what happens with this one is, you get this beautiful, um, it's a bit, I, I always think these ones on the, on the pipe, they always look a little bit like, um, when the tide goes over the sand, they look a bit like um, the ripples left in the sand. Let's have a look at this one. Look. <laughs> Another beauty. And the, the, the fabric that was on the inside of the roll is less dyed than the fabric that was on the outside, but I like that gradation. And when you look at what it is I'm going to do with these, they're not going to stay in big pieces like this. Uh, I'll be revealing all about how you're going to get your hands on some of this stuff. But not just yet, because uh, I need to dye quite a lot more of it. So the next time I see you with indigo, I'll be inside, all this will be dry, and it will have had a really good iron, and I'll be cutting it and sewing it and showing you what I'm doing with it. Thanks for watching. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed watching all of that um, beautiful uh, indigo blue being dyed out in the sunshine last summer. So it's a beautiful spring day here today and I want to tell you what I've done with the, indi the extra indigo that I made. So I've made these little packs that are going to be in the shop. When this video goes live, these are going to be in the shop. Now, there are nothing like as many as I hoped there would be because I simply didn't have the energy to carry on and dye it, but I did have some. And so these little packs here, let me tell you what they are. These are charm packs. So they are a five inch square of indigo dyed fabric and they're all different sort of beautiful sky colours. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I love indigo. I think it, it, it's just like looking at, the, at a summer sky. There are 25 in your pack here and I've had a play with mine uh, and I'm going to show you the things that I've made. Now, of course, you can make anything you like with your pack, anything but these are some of the things that I've made with the, uh, the fabric that I dyed. Now, first and foremost, you'll have seen this on the channel before, a little dog like this one. I like making these. This is not my pattern at all. This is a pattern that I, f I discovered years ago and I've made loads and loads of these little dogs. Now, in your pack here, there's enough in, uh, of these indigo squares to make a dog now this is this is the size I want to show you. This is a, a dog in progress here. This size. These squares are inch and a half. Uh, these squares are two inches and you can, if you're very careful, get a two inch square out of that. So if you wanted to make a dog with this kit, I asked my lovely friends at Robson Print if they would cut me some very, very accurate templates, uh, because that's the, um, the success of um, English paper piecing is having very, very accurate templates. So they did, and they've cut me a hundred inch and a half squares of exactly the right weight of paper to do your little square, whether you thread based it or glue based it, doesn't matter. Uh, all ready to go. And so when I put these things uh, in the shop, I'm going to put a little pack of uh, the inch and a half squares as well, so that you can make a dog if you want to. You don't have to make a dog, but the squares will be there anyway. But then there's a couple of other things that I thought that this indigo fabric would be suitable for. I've made them on the channel before, and I'm gonna make an, uh, an indigo playlist it's going to be called Indigo Craft, and I'm gonna put it on the end card so that you can see these three projects that I've made before on the channel. The first one is a little bit like um, when I made the curtains for my bedroom out of the indigo um, squares that I, I sewed together with a single flat seam, a Pajagi style or fell seams, and I made the, uh, the curtains that are in my bedroom now. Now, of course, if you wanted to make a panel, using these squares, you could sew um, five by five and make a square or longer, whatever, and do that fell seam, that Pajagi seam on here. And it would look like that. But I decided to cut mine into smaller pieces and sew them together, proper Pajagi style. And this is the result um, of that one. I did that one on the sewing machine. Now there's a, a third thing that I made with my little bits of indigo. Uh, and I also, I've made a video about that too, so that will be on the end card. And it's this sort of stained glass window um, panel that I like to make. I've got a couple of them around the house. I had some little tiny scraps of Indian block printed fabric left over from other projects. This is, uh, it's beautiful fabric. It's very, very sheer, very thin. Voil, they call it. And it's, uh, so the light shines through it really easily. So this is how I made this particular um, panel. Uh, here's a bit of um, close up of me making the uh, squares. They're really easy to make. And I did all of this by hand. I just stitched, it only took me a few, an hour or two.
so you too could make yourself uh, a panel. You can use any kind of fabric at all and then hang it in a window and the sun will shine through it and it will look absolutely beautiful. So those are the three things that I made, but you can make anything you like. Over in the shop now then are not very many <laughs> of these little kits. 25 squares of, uh, of hand-dyed indigo, a hundred little inch and a half templates here, uh, all of it tied together with a bit of dyed um, cotton tape that I also dyed at the same time. And I had hoped to make more of these, but uh, life got in the way, like it sometimes does. So hop over to the shop if you want to and check these, but also check out the playlist where I make uh, these three things on videos in the past. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, that. I hope you enjoyed watching that video that I filmed last year. And uh, subscribe if you want to, and give this video a thumbs up. That would be lovely. If you wanted to see the quilt that I made over on Patreon, I made that for a series that I called The Alongs, which was available for the $20 patrons last year. So that uh, they're no longer available there, but for all the $10 patrons, I'm reposting all of those videos every single week. And so soon it'll be that one's turn and you'll be able to see me, uh, the whole process of making that quilt. Uh, I love that quilt. Uh, so thanks then very much for watching and I will see you next time. And that's a wrap as they say.